Hello. Right then. How are we all doing? Oh. Change the stream title. Hello, Hoff. Good to have you back. I uh, saw bits of Mike's stream and uh, noticed uh, noticed he's he's bothered with um, like an introduction and all sorts of stuff that I haven't bothered with. Which is why he has more than one person watching <laughs> from the start. Right, Plasma Gamer. Good to have you with us. Not sure this will be picking up my desktop audio. No, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Sorry, one sec. I think it's not picking it up because I've changed the audio device. Probably pick that up. Yep. Did he die? Yes, I've died. You're right, David DIC. Right. Okay. So, there's a few things going on with this. Um, now I've got somewhere with this level. Uh, those who don't know what's going on, this is the adventure level. So, these co I've, these colonies, so that's the leaf cutter colony. And this is the trapdoor colony. Now the trapdoors, I've just used the trapdoor model, enlarged it for the queen. Because trapdoor queens don't actually look that different from uh, um, and but with, and the, I've done the same with the workers just made it smaller however as you can see the the, the workers are moving backwards and not animating so I need to look into that but either way both sides currently have a building plan uh, though they're not doing anything on the surface yet because they haven't told them I haven't told them to see there's 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 a an underground building plan section of AI which um, which can just be you just change the building plan and switch and uh, switch what rooms and it'll work however with the surface there is no surface AI as such it's just been done on a level by level basis. Now with free play, I was trying to make a generic one that which, which would use the points and distance from the points to um, to deal with it.
However, it'd be nice if I could come up with an AI which could be given a, or a section of the AI which could be given a very simple list of locations that it wants to try and harvest from. And given a couple of options like do they attack the player when they get that attacked, that sort of thing. Yeah, the underground leaves, um, there is literally only this one patch of them on this level. And the reason is that I added in a couple of small whip spiders here on harder difficulties, uh, right by the nest entrance. So you need some leaves in order to get past them to get out. It's actually quite hard. <laughs> Just because worker ants are really susceptible to them. And uh, Medea will be disabled. They're not yet, but they will be. Yeah, it's a new extra level I'm working on. It's the the adventure one. So it's not new new. It's um it's been in the works for a little while. Kind of on and off. But I've been putting more right, so you see I've tunneled to the surface and a couple more objectives have come up. Let's reveal the full map. So the map at the minute is small. And the idea is that as you travel around it opens up sections of the map. So you've kind of got to explore to um, to see the full map. And as you explore, it, it reveals objectives and stuff. I'll show you this as well, which is an experience bar. It's the I basically copied stuff from the spider level. Battle has begun. But as I kill this, you'll notice the experience bar jump. So that gave me 18 XP. I think the first upgrade's worker speed. So there we are. Miners have got plus 50 speed, so you'll notice they're a bit quicker. Adventure Time Hands Edition. We talked about it yesterday, and I'm planning on doing a balance change in the future to the ants. Yeah, they'll they'll be. I, I think balance is a constant thing in flux. Um, be nice to do one relatively soon. I think we should probably start collating. Um, well, I'll tell you what. What we'll do is I want to put a beta out at some point with this extra level and the tug of war one so it's had so they, they've both had some chance to be tested before um, before going live to the book to general public um, and during that we can gather feedback on on people's feelings about the balance of the various units in the game make some tweaks I've also got my I've got a little chart which tell which tells me how balanced things are. Well, I've got I've done some calculations which should come up with an idea of how balanced things are. It's not perfect because the abilities are so different. Gathering 300 leaves is going to be a very easy objective to complete. Might need to... I haven't balanced the amount of XP completing objectives gives. So I think any of them at the moment give about 500. Uh, some of them give 500, some of them give 1000 and whatnot. Problem is, if you complete one... Sorry, if you complete one at this low level, 
500 XP would be a lot of levels. And you've missed. Um, at those levels, like the text. I probably shouldn't have made a through route to that, but it doesn't matter, I'm not playing for long anyway, I'm only testing the start of the level. I think I've added upgrades up to level at the minute, so I'll, I'll I'll be implementing a load of the other upgrades. Maybe I'll do that next. There's some fun ones I got planned. It's, it's something I'm playing around with, but the the system I put in for the buffs, so when you level up, for example, I've buffed the, um, I'll show you it, so it goes on the tile grid. So this is the player's tile grid. Uh, Nickel colony buffs. Okay, so here they are. So it's, there's an array here. It says the creature that you apply it to, which is leaf cut miner, the buff type, and there's loads of them. The last one's meant to be none, but the tooltip I messed up. Um, there's loads of them, and they all work because they're all ones I plan to use. But it's easy to add more of. Buff name. That's if you want to. If the buff is to add an ability to the creature and the buff value so that's increased the speed by 50. Now that system is really easy to um, use and add into. It's something I was considering in free play like maybe you can turn on bonuses and I don't know about XP but maybe you can defeating an uber gives you a bonus so you can select a bonus for your colony or something like that. Oh, we're trying to read the objectives. Okay, so I completed an objective there and I've gone up like four, five levels. Oh no, oh, okay, that's that's showing wrong. Oh no, maybe it's not, maybe it's showing the XP to the next level. Yeah, I think it is. I think. So I say I haven't balanced the um, objectives there. Uh, okay, so it's... So level one was max harvest amount so they can the workers can carry five more health increase their health by 20 then it's increased their damage by one so there's a few there's a few buffs there oh hang on there's one more as well oh no they seem to be exactly the same that's probably wrong Yeah, it is. It is quite a lot, but like, it's just for this level. Like, it's not. Um, it basically turns them into mediocre fighters rather than completely useless. If I... There's some more nuts ones come that come up in this level as well. That's by no means the most OP thing in the in the 
in the buff list. Uh, let's have a quick look at the attack damage. Well, it didn't look like it worked actually. Hmm. Yeah, need um. to look into that because that doesn't look like it's worked. You know what that might be? I think I'm I think I've got I've got a guess at what that might be but I should have a look. Uh, this is all handled in a UI element. Um, what's it called? Adventure. I think I know. I, I know what it is. I bet it's worked for some of them and not for others. So I'll find some more the ones underground. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there, they've got the two point six. It won't be two point six. It'll be one point six. Let's explain what's happened there. Um, okay, so as I've gathered 300 leaves, it's come up with another objective there, gather a thousand leaves. Okay. So let me explain what's gone on there. For start level five, I've clearly copied and pasted this with the intention of um, replacing bits of it, but at level 5 it's meant to unlock Medea. all tenants of tile type worker but the ones that spawn from the queen won't be affected there so it's a leaf cutter queen chamber there we go So I've done it. I've done it on some of them, but not on all of them. Let's figure out how to make it unlock Medea. Um, the reason that there was the extra damage is because, like I say, this was plugged into number five and it shouldn't have been. This is just a copy and paste of number four.
next more than level one or melee would do. You know, when the Titan Titan mechanic is going to be available. Um, it's a bit of a funny one. Uh, it's it's a big part of the fire ants, so it'll definitely definitely be available when the fire ants make it. However. It's also uh, planned to be retrofitted into other sections of the game. So my guess is that that mechanic will make it before the fire ants arrive. But I can't tell you exactly when. At the minute, as a group, we, uh, we, were, t we were discussing... Um, Fire Ant Bridges this morning uh, because there's I mean I, I can the, the, it's, it's being worked on in multiple areas at the minute and we're at the point now where these areas need to be brought together um, Matt has been working on the uh, the actual inner workings of how the fire ant bridges will work so he's got these two points which well, I can show you briefly it's not it's nothing um, it's nothing too amazing what's the level called uh, I was doing it in test level actually so he's got his bridge his bridge connector points And is um, okay. So these are the bridge connector points, um, and they kind of link into tiles, and then they they create this spline between them, which can be moved about. And if I click on them. It's not working for some reason. It was working earlier, but no, it's not. And I've crashed it. Oh no, it's just a breakpoint. Continue. Hopefully it's just a break point. Um, but he's, he's basically... The way it's currently set up to work, and the way it will work, but um, it's not quite there yet, is a fire ant will somehow decide it's going to be part of a bridge. Um, ah, no, it has actually crashed. Great. When it decides it'll be part of a bridge, it will head up towards where the bridge starts. Um, then it will request a cart. It, it works similar to how the plants currently work in the game. So it requests a cart and then it rides the cart to the end of the bridge, at which point it gets locked into the bridge. And then at some point it will decide to leave the bridge. So it again it requests the cart and the cart takes it off the bridge. Now currently it's currently I think only one ant can join the bridge at the same time. And they are um And there's no AI in the ants to do it at the minute. So the way Matt was uh, putting it together, I shouldn't play with the bridges at the minute because they're clearly not in a very workable state. The way the way Matt was putting it together was just 
generating ants and sticking them at the start as if they just started joining the bridge. Um, it's my job to get them from being a normal ant to the to the point where they're joining the bridge and reverse that process. But and I was going to take that on this morning. I started looking into it and going. Matt was explaining his functions and how they all work. Um, I was ready to get going, and then we spoke to Liam about it. And Liam doesn't think his side of things, which is the being able to walk on the path once it's been created and that sort of thing, he doesn't think that's ready for it. So he is trying to generate a test scenario today. And then I will work on... Um, Blue thing. <laughs> it does look like the ants are carrying the blue thing. Uh, the blue thing is actually a new pack of socks that I just that I've bought and chucked on the side there. It's the label on the socks. You're right, um, Medivin Burnick. Is that an Indian jumper ant? Uh, um, can't tell. <laughs> I think originally Indian jumpers were planned for the game, but I don't think they. Uh, I think they were cut in favour of other things. Okay, so back to where I was. I'm not opening the I'm not opening that again because that'll probably crash. Um Alright Mike. Right round dumpling. Could make the ants convert when their pheromones are on the start, like going into rival ant colony. Um, I know when they're going to convert, and it's not actually to do with the pheromone trail being on the start. It's if the pheromone trail is on a area that's currently unreachable without a bridge. So basically, you place that down, place the marker down on the area that is currently unreachable without a bridge and the ants will just start forming the bridge to get to it so I don't know how it's going to start um, okay so should we do the upgrades let's do the upgrades Okay, so where were we? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so unlocking creatures. So this level has to start with your without having without being able to build media or majors. They will unlock as the level goes on. variant doesn't matter either because again you'll choose that as the level goes on also will the fire ants die when they form the bridge or will there be be a used tile um, so if if you remove the marker from the area that you you want the ants uh, from from the area over the other side of the bridge they they will wait till all the ants come back from that side of the bridge and then the bridge will start collapsing itself 
so you can't leave you can't um well by collapsing i mean the ants will start coming off the bridge themselves so if you remove the marker from the other side of the bridge it will um it will cause the bridge to uh to destroy itself well not destroy itself but the ants will leave so the bridge will stop functioning um so yeah you, they don't die and it's not like a structure it's uh the ants are basically out of action until you uh until you um to remove the marker and the bridge will become available again Yeah, you've uh, you raised uh, an excellent point, Huff. It's one of that's one of the uh, development issues we're going to have to figure out during the process. Um, so yeah, if you send two groups over to the same spot and they have to get past the same bridge, what's going to happen? Uh, I th we haven't figured that out yet. We could do something like only people in the first in the first marker group to be sent over there can form the bridge or see what you don't want is ants in two different groups for there's, there's all sorts of questions going on here um, for example if you have if you have a marker over there with two different groups of ants in it and then you pull one of those groups of ants out do those specific ants leave the bridge what would happen to the ones that are currently on the on the bridge um and i haven't got i haven't got all the answers uh, my guess would be that once they're part of the bridge they can't leave the bridge unless there's no more uh, ants over the other side of the bridge so the other side of the bridge has to empty before um before the ants can start coming back there's a lot of a uh, lot of there, there, there is a lot of um, what ifs to solve with bridges and, the, and we haven't even got the basic form of them fully operational yet they've been a big challenge already and there's more challenges to come you'll be interested to know that we've also got to deal with water height at different levels and bridges that's part of part of the plan so what happens to a bridge when water height goes up just to add to our troubles and down anyway back onto the uh, situation at hand something like that Okay, so the AI on this level is not going to be very clever, again, because because it's it's a small objective in a wider level. It's not going to have as much work put into it as the three one AI, and even the three one AI wasn't perfect. So. So I'm thinking these leaf cutters will just be harvesting the leaves in this area. They will probably just have set points that they're harvesting from. So one group up here, one group over here, and they will just harvest until there's nothing left to harvest. If they've harvested everything in this area, I think I will just send them at the player. So basically if they run out of leaves they will attack the player um, if the player attacks them it needs to make a decision so there needs to be some level of decision made whether it should attack the player or shouldn't Cross that bridge when we come to A. Right, so I believe the 
building plan puts everything in groups already. Let's have a quick look at the building plan. These are the building plans. Okay, yeah, so it's giving them group groups. So I need to place a marker. How does the computer place a marker? Let me experiment. can't remember how it's done. Where have I done this before? There's multiple levels I've done this on. I can never remember. there's going to be a there's going to be things when we're um when we've got the bridge building mechanic up half we'll definitely unleash you on it and you can uh you can break it in a million ways give us lots of work to do it's saving at the minute building the game is a bit slower than uh, playing it <laughs> Let's have a quick look on. What about uh, if we, this? Would probably be a quicker level to open. Uh, Brood Sisters, which is actually uh, babysitting. Brood Sisters was its original name before I decided it needed a more descriptive name. Brood Sisters kind of implies that they're your equal. Will an extra level be coming this month, like Tug of War? Um, it's hard to say. So we've managed to keep it up a month, for a month per level for a while now. Um, since we since we released the first one, it's been every month. Um, however, the issue is at the minute that there's bugs in the game. Uh, and if we produced a build now the bugs would come with it so I think rather than rather than uh, there being an extra level an extra level this month I think what there'll probably be is a, um, a beta test coming uh, so in that case yes there'll be there'll be extra level an extra level to play but no, it will You'll have to, as in, you'll have to sign up for. Um, well, yeah, you'll have to. You'll have to activate the base in order to play it and expect it to be buggy.
I was literally just spawning it. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste this whole function, and we can we can tear it apart in the uh, the other one. Okay, so there's more than one bot in this level, so there needs to be a couple of inputs. So if position's equal to zero, I believe this is the send home one. Oh, it's minus one. We remove the marker, so. Defend player. That, that's not. That's not really what we're into in this. In this. Uh, in this world. This situation. Uh, so. So zero is attack player. Oh. So it's equal to zero. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's not the queen, it's the tunnel exit because it just placed it on the tunnel exit and they go for the queen automatically there. Sorry, my mistake.
that's right. Well, they're not coming to defend your nest, are they? Do we need a message to come up? I think I'm just going to leave it for now. We can decide whether we do later. Okay, so other than that, we've got one and two. Okay, so it looks like the original had arrays, which we could probably do with actually. Um, the other thing that needs to happen here is the uh, the, the colony ID. So I'm dealing with two colonies here with this function. Colony ID is going to be brought into play here. So I'll come back to chat in a minute. Just trying to blaze through some of this. Trap your group one.
this is slightly confusing. Check if computer can attack. What's this got to do with anything? Uh, I'm going to skip this for now. Come back to it if we discover we need it. So colony ID colony ID is one, we go that way, if it's two we go this way. Not sure I need to ping the mini map again. Same with this, really. Right, coming back to chat. Looks like there's been a lot going on in chat since I uh, was last here, so let's zoom back over it. Hey there, am I correct to assume that you're one of the devs for this game? Yep. Yeah. I am one of the devs. Will there be heal a healing tile added to the game? There was a healing tile we, uh, we we discussed healing tiles a while ago, and I quite liked the idea of it, but I took it to the others, and it was shot down, and I don't remember why. Because a member of the community discussed it at some point. Like an area that you could heal your ants, or whether you're standing on a nursery, it heals your ants, or something, and it caused more complications than... And I don't think it was worth. I do love connect connecting wires. It's the it's the blueprints way. There is a small amount of health regeneration for the ants anyway. You are right. Can you answer this for me? Trying to get a whole control group to locate to a certain point in marker. Some ants run back and forth. 
I can do apart from grouping in the marker. Why is that? It's um, yeah, it's it's just it's designed to em to emulate, but at a faster speed. And what ants would do in nature, I mean, in nature, what really happens is the ants kind of randomly move around until until they find something, and then they will go back and reinforce that trail. Um, and then more and more ants will find that trail and if they find something at the end they will also go back and reinforce the trail until you've got an increase in ants activity in the area and of ants going backwards and forth from along the trail now in our game um, you can obviously control the ants however we didn't want to we wanted to maintain kind of an ant feel so it should at least look like an ant colony and for that to happen there needs to be ants going backwards and forwards along the trail um, so you can never have your full army at the end of the trail it's pretty high now um, like you can get almost all of them at the end of the trail and I think Liam changed things to be a lot more generous in that respect so more ants at the end of the trail ants respond faster at the end of the trail that sort of thing but there will always be some ants milling about in, uh, along the trail Um, but the the way the game operates is unlike a traditional RTS where if you lost a unit you would have to pay the full cost of the unit to replace it in our game losing a unit it's, it's something like it temp, it's usually about 10% of the cost of the unit to replace it the idea being that you're not trying to be precious about every single ant in your colony you you're meant to feel fine about losing a few or a few wandering off and not be well they don't wander off but a few getting lost along the trail or getting killed along the trail um because they're not so they're not it's not so vital to replace them it's not so expensive to replace them it's not so painful to have them to replace them. So yeah, it's not we we we're not direct control or, or any sort of we, we, there. There will always be an element of. I mean, the creatures decide what they're doing themselves, right? They use their abilities themselves and all that. You just decide where you want them to go. So there, there will always be that element in the game in order to maintain the feel of it being an ant colony rather than just an army. I mean, we could have from the start just made it so they all... In fact, the very first iteration of the control system in the game was just a single marker that ants just stayed at the end of and you could move the marker around. If you were there at the very beginning during the, demo, during the Kickstarter demos, I believe one of the builds there did it. The, the trails are there to maintain kind of an ant-like feel for the game. Our game's never going to be as precise as a lot of the other RTSs out there, and that's because of the nature of ants. They're not precise, and we we want to maintain maintain yeah a level of yeah I guess simulation-like feel, even though it's not a simulation. It's it's got a, a simulation elements to it. So yeah, so it was a choice we made early on. It's and it's not a, it's not a mistake or anything like that. It's it's a it's a very conscious choice, and the system's got a lot of work put into it to try and make it as unannoying as possible, but while still maintaining kind of like an autonomous ant walking backwards and forwards kind of feel to it. Do devs dev study ants much before creating the game? We're we're constantly studying ants whilst making the game. Before, not uh, well, not before we we decided to make the game. We we made the game before we knew a huge amount about ants. But 
some of the early discussions we had. I remember speaking to um, there's an ants group at the University of Liverpool, as in uh, an ants research group, um, and because that I, I used to work at the University of Liverpool. Um, in the early days, I kind of had a part time part time job there whilst we were trying to get the game off the ground. So I went to speak to this ants group because it seemed to be. Um, seemed to be a, sens a sensible thing to do considering we had them there um, and I remember one of the one of the members of the group saying to me that um, what we're doing seems to be um, seem he, he liked what we were doing because we were putting more emphasis on the diversity of ants um, so for example we've we've got the multiple different species in the game and we try and highlight the differences between them through both the narration and their their gameplay mechanics and I think a lot of people appreciate that because in pop culture a lot of the time ants get kind of this rep as just being ants you know there's just ants when in reality there's a lot of different types of ants and even in um, like and and computer games they they, te they there's not many of them and they tend to just be ants they don't they're not um they don't really focus on the different interesting aspects of the ants so so the so um I can't even remember what the original point was what I was saying But we do try and focus on diversity, on, on kind of the diversity of ant species. <laughs> the game really feels like it's trying to teach you ant aspects, writer especially. Yeah, I I think as we've learnt about ants, the um, we want to, we want to deliver more of the information because it is it's fascinating and. I think something that a lot of, that happens to a lot of players that are playing the game is they 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 play it and the narration the narrator says something and they go, really? They do that, and they look it up themselves and it's like, oh, they do. <laughs> you actually do get ants that squirt acid or ants that um, that take the babies of other ants or the uh, the the larvae of other ants, those sort of things. Yeah, the encyclopedia. We we always intended to have the encyclopedia. I'm not sure what state it was left in. Um, oh, you're making me go back over old stuff again. Well, not old. It's not old stuff. It was stuff that was never fully finished. But we we started st like loads of this stuff. Like this is the encyclopedia button. I know it adds some I know it adds some test text in there. See like these 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 systems are in the ga uh, they're in the game to um Quite incredible how far we got with this. <laughs> we get so far with the systems, and they never get um, they don't get finished. If your colony grows, you will need more of these workers to ensure the economy of your col colony rolls at good speed. The economy of your colony <laughs> rolls at good speed. Yeah, it's just test text.
Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not done by any stretch of the imagination. But the systems work, as you can see. They still need a bit of work, like uh, like that. That's clearly not been formatted correctly. But I mean, this drop-down search does work. Although I originally envisaged it to be basically a list of names that as you would as you typed in rather than rather than it be, they're becoming a drop down like this I envisaged it to filter the words that are in this box so there's, there's been some cross wires there between the plan and the um, execution we'll get there eventually anyway I need to disable that before I forget Yeah, it is very easy to get distracted. Well, I've got multiple things on on the go right now. Um, so we've got we've I'm, I'm working on this level. I, uh, which which I'm I'm guessing I'm about halfway through. I mean, I've sort of decorated the map. I've set up the colonies, but they're not attacking or harvesting yet. They'll they'll build their build stuffs all set up, but um, so they spend the money they start with. But so yeah, that needs sorting. That that's what I'm intending to do today. That that was what I was putting the positions in place for. Um, although I've just ended up just chatting most of today most of today's uh, stream how long have we been going for now? 1 hour 8 minutes um, I'll probably go uh, when I get to 1 hour, one and a half hours um, and then maybe stream again t tomorrow a bit earlier hopefully a bit more focused than today but yeah so I've got this map there's another map I'm working on um, the tug of war one, which is the one that's very nearly ready. All it needs is a, uh, it's a little bit more decorating. I think I, I think I did all the things I, I had on the list to do for it. So it needs a bit more decorating. Uh, so there's that one. Uh, got ideas for a couple more extra levels, but I'm not, I haven't started any of them yet. Um, I started uh, free play AI a while ago and we got to the point where it was it, you could start a game and set up the enemy AIs uh, however they again we were we'd only got to, got them to the point where they were randomly selecting places to go on the surface which is obviously ridiculous because they were just walking halfway across the map um, I need to get back to the enemy eye soon. I I need I need to figure out a finished tug of war. So we've got a, a new extra level coming soon. Then I need to figure to finish this one. So that that'll be a couple of extra levels coming. I'm not sure whether I should do the work on the enemy eye before that. And then some point soon, uh, Liam is going to managed to get managed to get Matt's bridge building code working and I'll need to work on the AI for the bridge building code as soon as Matt's got the bridge building done he will be rapidly turning out the creatures because he's good at he's good at the 3d modeling he's fast at it problem with bridges is it breaks a lot of our current game rules like 3d modeling I'm not worried about as soon as Matt gets on that he'll be churning out two or three creatures a week I reckon um, and then we'll have some some real good stuff for screenshot Saturdays. Um, 
but at the moment he's stuck and he has been for what well, sort he's, he's been working through it but he's, there's been a lot of problems come up during the bridge building he's nearly been on it for two months now and I think Liam's been the same with water walking uh, they're really featured looking back at, it, back at it I kind of think did we really need water walking I mean it kind of ties in with bridge building as well because the bridges form a kind of a path over the water um, sort of ties in but <sighs> it's one of these feature creep things that I think we perhaps could have done without however it's so much work's gone into it now that it's it's not time to ditch that feature yeah water walking's uh, something that some creatures are going to be able to do um, so you'll get some you'll get some creatures that can walk on the water and some big creatures that can swim through it now we're not planning on having them uh, fight in the water but they'll be able to move around in the water and come out onto land uh, where that where they'll fight I think they're gonna come out on at like ramps so basically they'll have to travel to a ramp and climb out the water there I think is the thought but we've got some arachnids and reptiles which are which are planned for to do that sort of thing I'd like to repeat half of those question. Will there be any stat val value of the ants slash upgrades of ants anywhere? Um, that's planned uh, as part of the wiki system. So yeah, that um, the wiki system is meant to have a section for ant facts for each ant and and the gameplay aspects so the gameplay aspects will include things like uh, attack damage health um, all those sort of things I think I'll represent it as I'm not sure whether to represent it as a DPS or a um, or damage and attack speed I suppose if we give it as damage and attack speed you can work out the DPS or maybe just do all three. Can any Titan swim? And can the Titan flee into water? Um I don't think we have any plans for Titan swimming. Um Titans in the levels are gonna be very tightly controlled, so Basically, if a Titan walks into an area that isn't set up for a Titan to walk in, it's going to look stupid, because because they're um, we get away with it somewhat with the Whip Spider because of its legs. Uh, the way its legs work, we used inverse kinematics, so the legs went up onto higher surfaces. I think they can go up, but they can't go down. Um, so we kind of get away with it a little bit with the whip spider also its legs are small however some of the titans we've got planned in fact most of the titans we've got planned we don't have that luxury because they're not like big spindly things like the whip spider they're um some of them are quite chunky uh so there's no plan on allowing them to swim and there's some pretty big titans coming so they need to be very controlled within the level so they won't be able to leave a certain area um, there are there is escape mechanics planned for them though some of them do have an escape mechanic planned uh, I don't want to give away what they are until we've got 3d models for them because I think those sort of things are much more cool to reveal as like a 3d model Can any titans swim? 
Like I say, there's no plan for a Titan to swim, but there is plans for Titans to be able to escape somehow on various methods. And there's plan uh, with the creatures climbing on them. They they during those times, if they escape with creatures on them, you lose the creatures, so they die. Um, but they also knock creatures off at various points. It's, it's it it's a it's a mix of things going on. Thanks to another viewer yesterday, I can I finally figured out how to put repletes in without breaking the game. <laughs> so it requires twelve for one. Nice food. Just an idea from a previous com conversation. Uh, always interested in the ideas. Maybe, um, maybe write uh, write a forum post about it so we can have a, a think about it. Although I don't think that would be coming until after the camp. If we ever did uh, replete, it, I don't think it would happen until after the campaign, and we'd start. We'd have to think again. Will will there be a grain collecting ant species in the game? Um, there isn't one planned no not as far as I'm aware maybe some of them do quite a few of the species um, farm aphids or or other uh, small insects so there's, there's more of those sort of mechanics coming um, we've 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 got a plan for for to get to get to version 1.0 It's taken a while to get there. <laughs> right, ten more minutes. I haven't, I haven't really. I've, I've, I've continued just chatting for ages. Right, let's see if I can get some of this um, work done. So, an easy task for me to do during the this bit. Um, I'm, I'm right in thinking I disabled Medea. Right, I need to try and get Medea to. Um, Okay, so yeah, they're disabled. You can't build them at the beginning. At level five, you need to unlock Medea. Now, to unlock Medea, to unlock Medea, I need to um, This is a bit of a hacky route around it. But basically, if you set members in something like this, it doesn't work for some reason.
Ah, oh, it's auto saving. Damn it. So, I think this will work. Yeah, that seems really convoluted. Anyway, let's see if that works. Uh, I need a cheat to give me some XP. I think I already have it actually in the... Yeah, okay, so right bracket will do it. Um, Okay, let's cheat my way up to Madeira and see if they uh, unlock. I might need to do a refresh of the of this when it happens. So level one, level two, three, four. Okay, level five. That should be Madeira unlocking. Doesn't appear to have worked. I might let me just check that it's actually updated on the tile grid. Yeah, it has updated. Okay, so there's some there's some piece of the puzzle here I'm missing. Uh, I think it's to do with. I think there's a function to refresh them. Set up build menu buttons. So that's that's probably it. Um, I also want the. I 
want a message to come up. we got this eight four Okay, so now that's working, we can start to add the other bits and bobs. Okay, so... So that was level 5. Level 6, I believe, is back to something along these lines. Okay, level 6 is Medi Medea plus 20 health. I think it's just Leaf Critter Medea. Plus 20 health. Do, do, do. Six. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll be leaving soon anyway. Um, th thanks, Jax, for coming. Uh, there's only uh, there's only a couple of minutes left of the stream, so I'm just going to put a couple of these in, and then we'll call it a day, I think, till tomorrow. And then we can do it all over again. Next one is Medea plus fifty percent piercing. How does piercing work? Hang on. Let me double check what piercing actually does. Is it percentage? Looks like it's a percentage. It's a value cap passed into a calculation. It literally reduces the physical resistance. So if someone's got 
100% physical resistance it reduces it to 50% physical resistance is a percentage right yeah, it's a percentage of reduction of an amount of damage so if you had 100% physical resistance um, it would reduce any physical damage by 100% although I think there's caps on it No, he didn't. <laughs> I'm about to end. I'm afraid the stream is about to end. Okay. So, <laughs> I think it needs to be 0 0.5. So, basically half, half, um, half the damage they do can't be blocked by resistances. It's um okay. So what piercing does is it reduces resistance. So if you have eighty percent physical resistance and you get hit by something that's um, zero, so if you have zero point eight physical resistance and you get hit by something that's got zero point two um, piercing, uh, the attack w when it does your resistance calculation minuses 0 0.2 from this from from your physical resistance and it can't take it below zero so it, it minuses it to a minimum of zero this is definitely why we need the the, the in-game pages the stats the stats and the way everything works in our games got really complicated there is so much to take in Uh, what's going on? Um, I'm making a new extra level um, and what you're seeing on screen here is a it's buffs to the to the colony you're playing in that extra level you've got an XP bar in the extra level and as you kill enemy creatures and complete objectives your XP goes up every time you level up a buff is applied to somewhat to, to something in your leaf cutter colony so it's it's what I'm doing at the minute is very specific to this level. There are there is balance stuff coming down the line. I'm not getting into that today. At the minute I'm working on an extra level and this is very specifically part of that level. Seven media plus fifty per cent. Let's get the spelling of this right. I mean, fifty percent piercing should be pretty strong versus um, IEA. I'll come back to that in a bit. I think I think there's a few places where it's been mistyped in the game. Yeah, quite a few. Uh, quite a few people have said that. Um, the issue with buffing them. 
to bring them in line with other ants is then you change the balance of the leaf cutter levels particularly 3-2 in that you just give the player a lot a lot more powerful well it doesn't have to be a lot more powerful I guess yeah we'll, we'll, we'll look into it when we get there But yeah, I think that seems to be the view of a lot of people that uh, the media are uh, a bit underpowered for the for the cost. It's quite expensive as a unit. Um, I mean, you haven't really got a choice with them in the leaf cut levels. It's just done some of the extra levels because you'd never choose them. The only reason you choose them is, they're, is that they're a medium sized creature so they can stand on top of the smaller creatures and underneath the, and, st and still underneath the, the larger creatures so you, can, so you can get a few you could potentially get a few more enemies into the front line a few more enemies, a few more ants into the front line Okay, it looks like armor's next. So this is another really powerful upgrade. They're getting two armor. So that means any attack that comes into them gets reduced by two. I remember I gave one of the Ubers three armor at one point and eventually decided to remove it because it basically made them unkillable by black black ants almost because I think it reduces black ants attack to virtually nothing and finally they get a plus 20% attack speed boost is another massive buff uh, I think just 0 0.2 Coming back to chat, went above the carrying capacity. That's what they're at. That's that way they power the army. Up. They already have pretty high carrying capacity, actually. I think uh, they're higher than leaf cut majors. If it's is that multiplicative, 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 or cumulative? Um. As in, is, is, is the zero point in that calculation there, Hoff, is the zero point five, um, is the zero point five uh, the armor value? Here, I'll show you the calculation. Um, just bring you into the C for a second. So, when calculating the uh, physical resistance, a reduction value comes in. Now, if we have a look where that's actually done, so it's so it's here. So in physical damage or thorns damage, um, we've got the final damage is 1 minus the calculated physical resistance so let's say you had a uh, f let's say you had a physical resistance of 6 
So the final damage will be one minus no if 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 zero point sixty percent sorry. So it'd be one minus zero point six, which would be um, zero point four, multiplied by the armor reduced damage. So ignore that. Just presume it, multiplied by the original damage. Um, So it's lit that would literally be a drop of damage coming in by 60%. So only 40% of that damage would would go through. Now it's one my the, the piercing gets passed in here. So so when calculating physical resistance, you start off with a temp float. So it, it, temp float which is the actual physical resistance which is 0 0.6 uh, in, um, let's say uh, and then you've got the um, reduction which is the piercing of 0 0.2 so 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2 so you end up with 0 0.4 there now this is this is just to make sure it, it doesn't go below zero because uh, piercing should not increase your dam it shouldn't increase the damage it Sort of something. Yeah, I'll deal with that in a minute. Um, so here we've got. Uh, so it's checking for effects here. So that's um, buffs or debuffs on the character. So, so the effects mean that you uh, see effects can actually increase damage to you because physical for example um the wood ants do it they they decrease your physical resistance so you end up with a physical resistance buff or oh, i think that i think they're venom resistance actually but uh, for example you end up with a physical resistance buff which is in the minus figures which actually increases the damage to you so you so after it's it's been after this has been calculated um and we've taken into account the reduction. Uh, we also take into account effects that have been applied. So I hope that explains it. But the, the basic way of thinking about it is that piercing, um, it's not a debuff on a target. What it is, is your attacks ignore so much of a character's resistance, of a, a creature's resistance. So if you've got, if you've got a, 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 a piercing of 20% and the enemy has a resistance of 20%, they have no resistance. To, to that attack. It's just a, a stat we added in just to be extra complicated. <laughs> but I think it's I think it's good there's lots of different stat interactions in the game, but I do agree that we need to um we're asking if multiple piercing bonuses stack additionally or multiple um you, uh, they're not they're not bonuses. Um so don't think it leaves it on the character that doesn't happen it's the indiv an individual attack has a piercing value with it so or the creature that's attacking has the piercing value so it's only for that attack that comes in it's not for the other attacks so if 10 creatures were hitting something at the same time each of their attacks would deal with their own piercing value it wouldn't deal with them um, there wouldn't be any cumulative effect a piercing value as well it's not actually to do with the attack it's to do with the creature itself meant for the adventure level the way the piercing bonus is applied um, the way it's applied is onto the creatures themselves so the Medea themselves um, 
probably completely over explaining this now but the uh, So piercing is not something that's showing up, interestingly. Either way, piercing is a stat that the creature has. Oh, where its stat is. must be set to only be visible when once they're in the game. So yeah, they've they've got um Yeah, so creatures themselves have the piercing. So it gets applied to every Medea you've got and every Medea you will you will build. <laughs> Maybe we can get it Henry Will to play EOTU. That would be great. <laughs> Apparently he plays a lot of Total War, as far as I'm aware. So yeah, the buff in the in the level gets applied to all your Madeira in the level. It's a colony-wide buff. All these buffs that are, do that are being applied are colony-wide buffs. Right, I'm going to get going. So, thanks for joining me. I don't know what you mean by do the the buff stack. Um, then, uh, if 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 I did another piercing, then yes. If I copied and pasted this and put it next to it, then yes, that would that would uh, that would. Uh, that would stack like this one for example uh, the damage one the basic attack damage one I did here with one value um, that goes on top of their current because their attack is initially 0 0.6 so it turns their attack to 1.6 if we have multiple 50% piercings would they multiply or add um, there is a e, e, the creature only has one piercing value so there's I mean if if I did that there um, so 0 0.2 oh that's yes. that's basic attack speed if I did that there they would add they wouldn't multiply but I'm not going to do that Creature piercing plus equals piercing bonus. Yeah, it's it's plus equals piercing bonus. I can show you in the code where the where the um where the colony buffs get added. They're in creature again. Yeah, there you are. Plus equals. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I've already changed that to an enum. Basically, after everything else has been applied to a creature, applied to a creature, it then also applies the colony buff. So it goes in, checks if its name is equal to that of the colony buff, and adds it.
Medea don't have any initial piercing, so Medea will only have, ever have that 50% piercing in this. If there was an original 20%, but... Do they? Maybe you're right. They might do. You seem to have studied the stat sheet more than I have, even though I wrote it. So is that what this is all about? Okay, let me put a Medea here. Press play. Guy's murdering all my ants. Yes, they do have a 20% piercing value already. Of course they do. Right, so I should probably... Maybe that's fine. I didn't know Medea had a 20% piercing. I must have forgot. So the last 20 minutes of me explaining stuff was because you knew that Medea had, had a 20% piercing value, and I didn't. Must level up. <sighs> Funny enough, this won't actually affect that Medea. <laughs> I have to build a new one because that one doesn't have a home tile. It's an orphaned Medea. should stay still yeah 0 0.7 there you go right <laughs> on that note I'm leaving see you next time oh you oh Sorry, I just realised I was still on Visual Studio there. I can I I completed your test. Yeah, zero zero point seven piercing. We'll have to decide whether that's OPOP. -OP. It might be OPOP, -OP, but to be fair, who cares? See you later. <laughs> See you tomorrow.